Just gotta have it on hand. Welcome to a raw and real wow. New Year's edition, I guess, in a way, not really, but I mean, happy New Year's to everybody out there. Um, we kind of did our New Year's edition a few, a few days ago, so yeah. all that good stuff. <laughs> are you in the new year with the crud? We are. I guess I'm the last in line, you know, to get it, so here we go. I kind of started coming down with it yesterday. I needed a oxygen canister to go on our walk yesterday, man. <laughs> so, I was like telling Jennifer, you're going to have to slow down. I got to stop for a minute. Oh, I can't. We were both. I got to catch my breath. We were both sucking for air. For yeah, sure. it's, I don't know what this is. I don't know what's going on, but uh, the devil ain't going to win on my account. So. It needs to go back to hell where it came from. That's <laughs> what it needs to do. In all its glory. Uh, so we're sucking down the hot teas and <laughs> <coughs> all that good stuff. So, whew, bear with us. <laughs> We're going to wheeze our way We're going to wheeze our way through it. Yeah, <laughs> amen. Well, I don't know about everybody else, but we had a pretty awesome New Year's. Um, it was good. It was amazing. So, I don't know. We all rang it in on the couch with blankets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. It was, though. Our Mardi Gras tree. We done. do. Um, I know people think we're crazy when we do that, but it's fun. It's fun. It's something that's unusual that this family does, and we're getting ready for it. I love to cook, so it's my thing, and Braley loves to bake, so it's her thing, and we just kind of join in and do a little, a little party and celebration of food and that type of stuff, and yeah. we don't really drink or do all that mess anymore, so that part's out, but. One of these days, I'm going to try a hurricane. I've never had an authentic hurricane, so oh. when we go, I want to try one just, just to try it. I don't know if I could handle all the sweet maybe. and the alcohol. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I could, but I don't know. I don't know. It's uh, it's just... Sweet and alcohol don't always yeah, I get mesh that. well, but I don't know. We're going to try one, though. just want to try it. I don't know. When we went to Razoo, it was a long time ago. Yeah. When I was very first pregnant with Braley, that's kind of what y'all had in that big... I don't know what that was. Oh, Ryan yeah. ordered it. God, we were young and crazy and stupid. and It was a, it was like a giant fishbowl is what it was. I kind of think that was like what a hurricane would be. I don't know. They, they make one, but um, I haven't ever had it from there. I don't know. Anyway, I don't even know why I got off track on that. I really don't. <laughs> Uh, I'm not <coughs> not a big drinker anymore, and all that good stuff is just not my thing. And uh, I know my limits, and I'm good with that. But um, no, we uh, we had a good New Year's, and, and I hope everybody did too, a safe one. And we're looking forward to 2023. I can't believe it's already here, and we got some exciting stuff. We we start our first uh, of many uh, outreaches. We started on the 15th. We're going to crack into that here, um, and we're looking at some other places. So if you need, want some people to come in, need some extra God going on out there, messages, we'll be happy to come in and see what we can do. I mean, um, we just want to share the true uncompromised word of God with anybody that'll listen. And um, kind of the basis behind these is to really get down deep and, truly dive into to the word of god it's not just a uh, a church service or a bible study or anything like we're truly you know trying to uh be god's hands and feet and mouth um in this time and so that's that's our focus that's our goal um we don't really associate with a denomination or a non-denomination we don't even i don't even like putting in those categories anymore um uh, as far as i'm concerned because truthfully to me, it's, uh, it's lining, lining yourself up with something. And I don't want to be aligned with anything, but, but the Holy Spirit, God's word, and, you know, Jesus is our salvation and that's it. So whatever that falls in, that's, that's what I'm under. Yeah. I don't know. Too much stuff has become emphasized on that. And, and I just, I don't know. Like, I know it was difficult for, for me when we first started, when we first got married. Because I was born and raised as, as a Southern Baptist. You know, that's, that's where my family fell in. And uh, even after Dad got transferred, when he got back home with the oil company, 
<coughs> Excuse me. And Seagraves, they really didn't go much. Um, I don't know why. I, I really, to this day, couldn't tell you why they don't go much. They just didn't go much. I like to go. A lot of my friends went. So we continued. And the big deal was moving my letter from, you know, to Hoka to Seagraves. I guess you have to move your letter of commitment or whatever it is so they can record your numbers. And I, I really don't know what all that's about. It's irrelevant. But, and so, you know, and then that kind of hit or miss, you know what I mean? I, I couldn't always make it yeah. and kind of just fell off and fell aside. And then I kind of went on a rampage for several years and then we got together and I, I wanted something different. I, I didn't know what, I didn't know what I was after, but I wanted something different. I wanted something that I could sink my teeth into that had some meat, you know what I mean? Some real meat. And we, I don't even know how, I, I really don't remember how we found out about Monty and Susan out there. You wanted um, to go because somebody you knew went. Okay, well I couldn't tell you who that is now because I didn't know many people. Maybe through work I drove by. I don't know. I really don't. But it was a game changer. Um, the way they talked and, and teach, teached. The way they teached. Man, I'm doing good today. Sorry, Nana. Um, the way they taught and the teachings that they had. There we go. I'll get it right here in a minute. <laughs> you know, um, it wasn't something I'd never heard before. And still, I struggled in some areas because I was still kind of back and forth between friends of my old lifestyle and the new feelings. And I wouldn't say, you know, God doesn't force you into anything, but I think he gives us those nudges. He gives us those urges and those desires to, you know, <clears throat> want something else, something different. Yeah. And so I was caught and it caused a lot of hardship in straddling the fence with friends that I have and where I wanted to go because uh, I, I kind of knew where this life was taking me. I mean, I've been doing it for quite a time, but I was really intrigued as to, you know, God's path. And man, I'm, I'm really, really, really sad to say that even one of my friends took his own life, you know, years later. And it, it puts things into perspective because you think, would I have been in that same scenario? Had I continued to travel, had there not been those interventions, had I stuck with those friends, what would have happened to me? Because one wound up in jail, one took his own life. I mean, it, it really does, I mean, it gets real. It, and that's what we're about here, but it does, it gets real. And, you know, I, I don't think I'm the only one out there that's maybe <clears throat> been through this or, or seen this or whatever. So, you know, but in case you hadn't figured out, we're, we're talking about friendships today and, and the relevance, like, where they have to do with your life and the relevance they have on your calling and your purpose. Because I, I think I think all friends come into our lives for a reason. I don't think any of them are just by chance. No. I think God allows even the good, even the bad ones to have some kind of impact in there and there's lessons to be learned in it. I do. Yeah. And it's always hard to know when to walk away, um, when that friendship's not benefiting you anymore, or when you've outgrown that friendship without it turning into kindergarten games. You know what I mean? For sure. It's, I think we've lost, left a lot of friends behind. And I don't know that it was intentional. I know some of them were intentional, like they were destructive to us, to our marriage, to, <coughs> you know, our our well-being. I think we had to leave those behind. Yeah. Um, not to say that you don't think about those people every day and, and wish them well and, and hope they're doing well. Um, sometimes they really weren't your friend. Um, and that's hard to differentiate from, too. I probably need to fix <laughs> that light. No, and, and building on what you're saying is, you know, yeah, I agree. Uh, there we go. Uh, I agree that there, there there comes those times to let them go. In fact, I've, I've got a lot on that here that I'm going to share. But, I mean, I think it's good that we have those times so that we know. Because, I mean, 
if all you ever do is eat red Skittles all day, every day, you're not going to know the difference. I mean, you will, but I mean, when a green one or, or something else comes along, like, you don't, you don't know. Does it taste any different? Well, until you have it, you don't know. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, is like, I think it's, it's crucial that we are allowed to go through situations. God doesn't always uh, have a hand in putting us in those, but sometimes I definitely think he allows us the opportunity to go through these things so that we know. Yeah. Um, you know, it is important uh, to have solid family friends and friends, period, you know, who will help you achieve your destiny. You know, and in fact, Proverbs uh, 27.10 says, Do not forsake your own friend, friends or your father's friends, nor go to your brother's house in the day of, of your calamity. Better is a neighbor nearby than a brother far away. And so, you know, sometimes it's, it's good to have those friends close by to lean on to help us get there. Um, but nevertheless... I think we have to keep keep guard. We have to we have to watch. Uh, we have to watch out and, and and know when it's time to end something. Like you were saying, we've had those. We've had those friends that it just we could tell it wasn't going to lead to anything good for this covenant between you and me. And so we had to cut that away. We had to break away from that. Um, you know, with these the people that are that are going to drag us down and and lead us down the wrong path. In fact, uh, there's there's several of them that I I wrote down with that. In fact, one of them is, is Proverbs 1, 1. It says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Uh, Proverbs 12, 26 says, uh, let me get over here to it right quick. It says, The righteous should choose his friends carefully, for the way of the wicked leads them astray. First uh, Corinthians fifteen thirty three, and it says, "Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits." So, I mean, there's plenty, both New Testament and Old Testament, on this. So it's it's inevitably a good a, a big deal to God, or there wouldn't be <clears throat> all this, you know, lessons and stuff on it, and then so. It is crucial that we know, hey, things aren't lining up with the way I feel. Things aren't lining up with maybe the way I feel God's starting to lead me. So I need to do something different. Yeah. Well, and it's hard because there was a time when we were partners and we were friends that were really, <coughs> really in your prime. Yeah. You had a lot of friends. And then when you yes, stepped you back and decided you didn't want that life anymore... Um, a lot of people left. Yeah. I mean, we were kind of dumbfounded, I think. Um, I mean, I understand, like, they came in to a relationship, and it was one way. And, I mean, we never made anybody not drink around us, or it just no. wasn't benefiting us at the time, because there was a true problem there. Um, and I don't think many people realize that, because we never talked about it. But there was a true problem there. Um, and so people were like, y'all changed, and yeah, we did, and that's, that's hard, but we had to change in order for our lives to be okay. Well, a lot of people have never realized, <clears throat> or maybe they, I don't know how to say it, but I'm just going to say it like this. A lot of people don't realize that, that I have a chemical imbalance, and, and, my granddad had one. My, my mom's dad had a, had a chemical imbalance. Alcohol does something different to us. I don't know why. Uh, some people can sit down and have two, three, four beers. And, like, they literally are fine. It does not affect them. It is, like, water. <laughs> it doesn't really alter anything. I have one beer, and instantly there is a whole change in my personality, my, my thought process, my thinking and it didn't always start out that way. It, it grew worse. So it's like I was feeding the beast inside of me. Um, and it just becomes now to where it doesn't take anything to set it off. Yeah. And so people didn't understand that. And it would legit lead to massive 
chaos in our house and it wasn't worth it. And it took a long time for me to be able to kick it and get a grasp on reality and change things. But it did change the way they acted around us because I truly think that, you know, the scriptures are true. Darkness cannot live in, in light. It just, it's common sense on top of that. I mean, it's impossible. Yeah. But just like you had to turn the lights on just now to give us more light, and the darkness fled. fled. I can't talk yeah. today. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to be... This is not on vacation. <clears throat> no, there's nothing in this. But I mean, the bottom line, what I'm getting at is, is it can't, and, and it's uncomfortable. And I think that's exactly what happens. It, it's uncomfortable for them to be around because there is a stereotype out there about Christian people, and I hate it because it's not true. Um, yes, there are those uh, that are gaudy and, and holy and um, well-showing, I guess is another good word to use for it. Um, you know, even Jesus dealt with them like the Pharisees. That, that was their whole deal. Like, they they had more emphasis on acting holy than actually being holy. As long as you think I'm doing good, I can go to church, I can put on my persona, because nobody's going to really see what I'm doing when I'm not in the temple. Yeah. And so, you know, I think there becomes this stereotype that, that goes to floating around where people are holier than thou, like I'm judging you. And, and there Who are those. Else? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's some old Rodney... Rodney Carrington Where's reference. The Where the thou? But uh, <laughs> I mean, I do. I, I think it it's out there, and, and I think it gets a bad name and a bad rep because people they think that we're holier than you, and, and we're going to look down upon our nose on you and everything. And and that's not what being a Christian's about at all. It has nothing to do with that. But that's what religion has led to. And so now, through religion, we have all of these stereotypes. And people don't really see God. They they see man, and there's a problem with that. Some people don't want to go to church because they went out last night and had a good time and didn't hurt anybody. Probably didn't even sin any worse than you're sinning. You know what I mean? And they don't feel worthy enough to come to church because they're going to have a hymn taking party over, you know, well, they're partiers, they're this, they're that. Well, okay. So you're talking about somebody, so your gossip chain isn't any worse than his drinking problem? I mean, or not even a problem, maybe. Not everybody has a problem with alcohol. No, I going out and being a social drinker is not a sin. I truly think that's between you and God. If there's a problem, absolutely it needs to be addressed. But if there's not a problem, that's between you and God. No. I can't tell you what's too much for you. And you can't tell me what's too much for me, but... The only thing that is a problem is being a, a blatant drunk and an out drunkard all the time, all day, every day, because you're not operating in your in your right element. You're in a different, you know, utopia in your head, and and, and that's why you're basically making a, a god or an idol out of alcohol instead of God, and, and that's why it's a sin. Right. I don't, I mean, being a casual drinker or liking to come in after a day's work and having a beer or having a beer with a you know, meal, I, that's not a problem. Right. It's just not a problem. And, and it's become those stereotypes that's turning people away. You're right. But I think we lost friends because they were like, well, you don't drink, so now you're, you're this way. And it wasn't that we were any way. It was just really wrecking havoc on our home. I mean, it wasn't doing us any favors like us going out and getting drunk and fighting all day the next three days was not beneficial to anybody you know and so we did change but I didn't expect you to change like you didn't have a problem with alcohol and it didn't bother me or you for that matter for people to drink around you it still doesn't still doesn't like, I don't care if I think a what problem they... and you need to bring a six pack in to come visit with us it's happened a lot of people do that. It doesn't bother us. We're still the same people. <coughs> and that's where friendship gets hard because we don't want to have these hard conversations with our friends. And if you can't have those with your friends, like, what are they serving you in your, in your life? I mean, you can't be raw and real with certain people. I don't think that's a true friendship. Well... I think what people truly start to see that causes the major problem is, I mean, stereotypes are 
a, a major hindrance in that. But I really start to, <clears throat> excuse me, see that the, the real issue lies with the anointing that's on you. And when God starts flowing in you, he begins to seep out of you in, in the early stages. The more you feed that, of course, the more that, in an analogy, the more you take in, the more it comes out. Mm -hmm. it, your body can't contain all of God, so it has to come out. And that's what the Bible talks about, seeing God through you. Yeah. Because the more you're putting in, the more it's coming out of you. The anointing is what really begins to eat at them because your spirit man begins to talk to their spirit man and they don't know how to handle it and that causes problems. Yeah. Um, and that's where the the real issue lies and, and why they say that you know darkness cannot exist where there is light because the light overpowers the darkness. It's it's too mighty. And I think that's what the problem is. And if people can get past that. Like you were saying, I think then some real progress can be made. Well, I have a, a friend, and she called me out on that. She was like, it's hard for me to be around you because I truly have a discerning spirit. Mm -hmm. You do. That's one of I your callings. I don't always walk in it because I truly want to give people the benefit of the doubt. But she was like, you see straight through my BS. Like, I can't BS you. And I was like, I mean, you can. It's fine. <laughs> you know, I want to love you where you're at, if that's where you're at, and I do, but, you know, that was her big problem with me. Like, she couldn't BS me. She couldn't, you know, be that way around me. And we talk still on occasion, but we don't talk very often. No. Um, that's kind of one of those I had to let go because she wasn't comfortable around me, and it took me a long time to realize that wasn't my problem. Yeah, that's, that's a difficult one. It really is. Because I don't want to... I've toned myself down for so long. I'm too much <clears throat> for some. I'm not enough for others. You know, you're always trying to find that balance. And, and I think that's a and mistake. No offense. And I've had to learn that, I mean, just over the past year that I'm not for everybody. And even these friends that I've had for years and years and years... I'm still not enough for them, or I'm too much for them, and so that's really not my my problem. As ugly as that sounds, it, it's not my problem. You cannot let a friend take you out of your calling. Yeah. And what we're talking about is is if you if you want to write them down, you can go to First Corinthians fourteen, First Corinthians twelve. Uh, both of them discuss. What we all know today as the gifts, the spiritual gifts, or the gifts of the Spirit. And Paul writes to the church in Corinth on, on two different occasions. Um, uh, now concerning the spiritual gifts is chapter 12, and, and it, it lists them, you know, the difference of administrations. Uh, and that's what she's talking about. And then it, it goes on again. Um, 13 is more of the love. Everybody knows it as the love chapter. But 14, we, we get into the design of the spiritual gifts uh, a little bit more. And he kind of breaks them down a little bit. So 1 Corinthians 12, chapter 12, and chapter 14, you'll get into those. And that's what she's talking about. But we cannot let our friends take us away from our spiritual callings. You know, we are anointed with those gifts. And, and for so long, you and I both have done that. We've operated outside of our gifts and our calling and our purpose and we've ran and we've, we've talked about this many times before because we didn't want to offend anybody or we didn't want to not fit in or we didn't want to be too strong, yeah. um, which are all I, you know, thoughts I think we all have at, at times, but you know, we also, we, we have to recognize that there is an importance, that there is a reason why we were chosen to have these gifts and we need to operate in them because who else can get to that friend any better than you can? Wow. Um, and ironically, I mean, it kind of brings up another topic that, that I wrote down. And um, this is kind of a, of a, dif a difficult one to get into, but, but uh, it's, it's, we feel a lot of times that we can change people. Mm -hmm. Spouses feel like they can change their spouse. Uh, if I can just get them to marry me, we can work on them. Well, first of all, you should not go into any relationship 
with marriage involved that you have plans to change that person. If you don't love, well, yeah, I don't know if that goes on friendship because, like, marriage, no. If you're not 100% in love with that person, top to bottom, side to side, front to back, you're not going to be able to change them. I think y'all can grow together like we have. We have grown together, but I've never tried to change you, and you've never tried to change me. We've tried to help each other grow, but we've never looked to change. Friendships, I think if, if there is somebody down the street that God lays on my heart, and I want to share the love of God with them because they're really struggling. They got an addiction. Um, they have, you know, problems, whatever. Like, going into that relationship to help change them is not a bad thing, in my opinion. That is a relationship into where change needs to be made. The problem, I feel like, lies in two areas. One of those uh, is that we don't get drug in that path with them. Too many times the, the conversation has come up about going in and going to the bar and having some beer with some friends and trying to preach the word of God. Yeah, That's come up a lot. Yeah. The problem with that is you go in there with the right intentions. And so you start all chill and laid back with your approach. And the next thing you know, you're not even motivated to talk about God. You're too busy laughing, having fun and throwing them back. You know what I mean? The, uh, the other problem uh, that comes in was, and the Bible talks about it in many different forms, but whoever you hang around with is who you're going to start to, to smell like and act like. So you repetitively hang around these people and you try to come to them on their terms, on, on their ground where they're more comfortable, and you end up getting drunk in. In fact, uh, you can't hang around with vultures and fly with eagles. That was a money thing, and, and he's spot on, you know. Um, right here, I will get to it shortly. Maybe, sort of, kind of. <laughs> uh, Ephesians 5, 5 through 7 says this. It says, For this you know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Verse 6 says, Let no man deceive you with these vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Verse 7 says, Be not ye therefore partakers with them. It means you cannot go to them on their own ground. You want to try to, in, you know, in effect, I was going <laughs> to, you want to try to affect their lives, you need to do that by, by encouraging them to, to slowly come to your side. Yeah. You know, and, and the worst thing that I could ever remember, like, the worst thing anybody ever tried to do. Well, come to church with me, brother. Like, that was half of my problem, or <laughs> a third of my problem, that I had such a drinking problem. I was tired of the religion. I was tired of the denominationalism, or if that's even a word, but I was tired of, of, of that. You know, I, I was tired of, of that. I didn't want that. We had one or two people uh, in the inner circle that could actually make some ground with me. And, and one of those people was, uh, in a way, a family tied in friend, but, you know, my colleague, he had a way that he could connect with me and help me during those dark times. Um, just one of the gifts that he had didn't hurt that he was a prison minister, you know, and, and stuff and runs a great ministry. It's Unchained Life Ministries. If you get a chance, I want to look them, look them up. But, you know, we cannot go to these people on their terms. We need to slowly bring them over, invite them over for a barbecue or something, um, or a meal. Something that shows love and care and affection without pounding the word into them. Because I promise you, you know, they used to always tell us, minister to these people daily, and if needed, use the word of God. And I think that's important, especially when you're dealing with people that are in, in some vital, volatile situations. I'll get it out. Hang with me. Because the triggers that they have are so delicate. It's those hairline trigger, you know, those... Uh, oh my goodness gracious. When, when you have a rifle that's touchy, uh, hairline, hairline trigger. Yeah, I was right. Okay. <laughs> So, I've had no medication, I promise you. But it is like a hairline trigger. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, 
it won't take much that the wrong thing or the wrong motive and they take it wrong and off we go. Um, the other one is, is Proverbs uh, 22, uh, 24 and 25, and, and I'll, I'll hit it real fast. Um, but there's some good points here in, in the Word of God that I wanted to touch on this afternoon. Hard to believe, but uh, all right. Proverbs 22. 24 and 25, it says, Make no friendship with an angry man, and with a furious man thou shalt not go, lest thou learn his ways and get uh lest thou learn his ways and get a snare to thy soul. So that's what they're saying. Like you try to go to those people. If you're not guarded, if you're not ready, they're gonna snag you up. Yeah. Uh, they're gonna it's gonna draw you in and draw you away. And you don't mean for it to, but that's what's going to happen. That's where you're going to wind up. And that's happened. We've been in that situation, and we're like, we fall right back down the same path. Right. And we're like, we can't do this. This is not good for our family. And it gets us off track, and it, it, it takes us down this path again. And it's like you're in this vicious circle that you can't get out of because you're trying to do good. You're trying to be that person, but... You're not strong enough in your faith. You're not strong enough in your word that you fall back right into that. Well, I don't think any of us are ever fully prepared. <laughs> and, and the reason I think this is because the deeper you dive into God, the deeper the enemy knows your path. So, you, for example... The, the devil sees me getting closer to God. He knows by my actions that I'm drawing closer, that I'm getting wiser, that I have more knowledge. He just has to step up his game more, which they do. We've seen this firsthand. The, the more we continue down this path of ministry, his tactics really don't change. His motives do. Yeah. What he uses to come against us are the ones that are changing. But his tactics are still the same. He's trying to come in and knock us off course. And so, like, the, the more we, we get close to him, the more he's going to try to resist and, and throw us off track. And so, um, what I'm trying to say is, like, we need to really stay guarded daily. That's why I believe Paul wrote uh, in, in Romans 12, you know, to renew your mind. And, and I think what he's getting at, the way it speaks to me, is daily. Stay renewed daily. Renew, 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 renew. Because without that, we will grow lazy and we will grow off guard. Or, or we're able to be caught off guard, is what I'm trying to say, to where we're going to get tripped up. Because John himself said, you know, the devil comes as a roaring lion. And in chapter 10, seeking whom he may devour. Because... He's going to look like God, but he's actually, you know, not. And he's yeah. going to trip us up. Right. So, yeah. I mean, we have to stay on guard. And I think he works that way in friends, too. Oh, absolutely. I do think um, what we think are true friends, and they turn out not to be, um, it's not always a you thing. It's always a spiritual thing. Um I think he puts people in our path and we think, oh my goodness, they're godly, they're Christian people, they're, you know, I'm looking from the outside in, they're living this great life, they're doing things the right way, and then you get into the friendship and you're like, oh, y'all aren't who you said you were. <coughs> y'all aren't anything what you said you were. And now you feel betrayed, you feel lied to, and... Somehow it always flips out that you're the bad guy. When that ends or when that happens, it's always like, you're the bad guy. And I'm like, mm, I don't think I was the bad one here. Like, you the know? spirit of discernment is not my strong suit. That's more along your, your ballpark. Um, but there was a, a particular time, and you'll know what I'm talking about, where I was just, I was certain. I was like, Jen, this ain't right. Like, there's too much wrong here. And basically what I'm, what I'm getting at is, is uh, you know, Christians can, can deceive or be deceived 
And it's important to know your friend's motives. You know, some people are only godly for some uh, for some kind of gain. Their 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 motives are, are literally financial, physical, uh, statural gain. Uh, and in fact, First Timothy six four and five says this. It says he is proud, knowing nothing but doing about questions and strifes of words, whereof <clears throat> cometh envy, strife, railings, evil, uh, uh, can't even pronounce that word, sorry, <laughs> sermishings, I've never heard of that one, uh, anyway, perverse disputing of men of corrupt minds and the destitute of truth, supposing that gain is godliness, for such withdraw thyself. And that's what I get. Like, only thing their motives are is, is to gain something from saying they're godly or acting godly or trying to, you know, be outwardly godly when they're really not on the inside, like we were talking about the Pharisees earlier. Yeah. And you did call that one, like, very much so. Um. When something just eats at you and you cannot, like, it won't leave you alone. It's just over and over and over, you know. You can't help it. Go ahead. I did, I was no, just, you didn't interrupt me. I was just looking at, at this one here in 2 Timothy 3, 2-5. It says, uh, For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, uh, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, innocent, fierce, uh, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than the love of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. Ooh. That's hard to do. Especially because you want to give everybody the benefit of the doubt. You want to love people right where they're at. Right. You know, you want to love them through their flaws. Because I want to be loved through my flaws. I have a lot of them. Um, and you want to be that for everybody. And sometimes you just can't. Sometimes you're too close, maybe. And you just have to draw that line in the sand and be like, I can't. This is toxic to me at this point. You know what I mean? Cause you that's exactly right. And that's what I wrote down out of this was, you know, it, it has... Um, like that kind of friendship are toxic in so many levels. It affects your mind, it affects your health, and it affects your walk with God. Yeah. And I know there was a lot of times like it literally messed with you in the head so much over certain instances similar to this that it, it kept you from sleeping. You tossed and turned all night. You worried about it all the time. It was affecting your walk with God because you weren't really focused on on God, you were more focused on uh, fixing this problem with this person. And I feel like what God is trying to tell us in those situations is you're not the problem. They have the problem, but it's affecting you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I think God is really trying to get us to understand and come to, to the, the light, the knowledge that we can't let their shortcomings affect us and, and harm us to the fact that we are not growing, that we're not completing our task. You know, we need friends in our lives for all kinds of reasons, and that's perfectly fine. But there has to be a balance of, you know, time with them uh, and there has to be that other balance of time with God. Yes. And the balance is going to seem awkward if you're doing it correct because the scales are going to lean more towards God than, than them if you're doing it right. Just like they do in a relationship with your spouse. I think mean, most of us look at it like this when actuality, you know, it should be a lot more God and a lot less of your spouse. And I don't mean that in a negative way, but... I can't be the best me that I can that I need to be for you or the kids. 
if there's not more of God and less of me. I've always had that problem um, of putting you before God. Right. Because, like, you're here. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you need me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, Do I? Well, maybe not. <laughs> no. Probably not. You don't need me. <coughs> Whatever. Like, our relationship needs all of me. Yeah. Is what I always felt like. And so it was like, God understands. No, God doesn't understand. You don't understand. <laughs> right. How important it is to truly put God before your marriage and before your kids and before any other relationships. And it's been beneficial since I've changed that way of thinking. Because I was like, how could anything come before our marriage? Like, that was top priority over everything. Like, you are my best friend. You right. are my biggest friendship. You know what I mean? And so, how do you put anything before that? But you have to put God before that. And you have to stay studied up. Yeah, because you do. I can tell you when I'm not studied up, that's when the enemy comes in and takes us down a rabbit hole that we should never go down. And it's the same way in friendships. I'm always praying for our friends and, you know, for wisdom and knowledge and how to handle them because each friendship is different. Right. And some friends we meet with every week. Some friends we don't see for years on end and then we pick right back up, you know. Every friendship needs to be nurtured differently. And so you're always praying and staying in that discernment. And it's been easier to let some people go because I'm more focused on my work and my relationship yes. with him. It's it's always hard, I think, to let it's anybody hard. go. Right. Um, but it's gotten easier because I'm stronger in my word and in my faith. We understand why. Yes. And I think that's the crucial part is, you know, understanding that there has to be sacrifices to gain the greater good. And, and it's not fun. It's not something that we like to do. Right. But in the same boat, I don't think anybody, and I could be wrong, likes to be still and stagnant. I think deep down we, by nature, always strive for something greater, something more, something bigger. If we're not... I think we truly need to reevaluate our lives because we should always, no matter what it is, expect to gain or to grow or to exceed from where we are. Uh, some people may just like the same old, same old. They may like staying in the same stale, stagnant place that they are. Like comfort comes in instability. Um, I'm different in that because I've always been an adventurer at heart, I think, and I like to always push the boundaries. Somebody tells me, well, don't go past Fifth Street. Well, I'm going to go four houses past Fifth Street just to see what happens. And I've always been that way. It's always got me in trouble. But, you know, I was always that way. I was. But in the end, a lot of times my pushing boundaries uh, benefited me. And, and I had to pay for some mistakes and I had to do some things probably not uh, normally, but in in the end, like it, it did me a lot of good by pushing yeah. those boundaries and, and pushing the envelope. Yeah. And that too, I want to kind of end with um, you have to take responsibility for your part in the friendship not working. Yeah. It's a two way street, no matter how you cut it. Um, you probably weren't completely correct in 100% of the relationship, and they weren't either. Um, there's three sides to every story. His side, her side, and the truth. Yeah. And so, you <coughs> have to take your responsibility in that and, and where you messed up and deal with that with God on, on you and what you need to apologize for or not apologize for. But you also have to lay down the fact that it wasn't all you um, and you can't take responsibility for how that other person responded or reacted and so that was where it was hard for me because I was always like what did I do wrong where did I miss it um, so much so that people that truly did me wrong and truly hurt me were 
having to take credit for any of their actions. And so you have to realize that it was not all you. Yes, maybe you could have done something different, but maybe you couldn't have done anything different. If you would have done something different, it still would have ended in the same place. So just own up to your responsibility for it, why it didn't work. You weren't who you needed to be or whatever the case may have been. But then also let it go that it wasn't all you. That it's not all on your shoulders. And sometimes people are just not good people. That is true. And, and building on or adding to some of the things that you said there in points, what helped me was understanding the difference between facts and and the truth, because you said his side, her side, and the truth. In that, that is that is spot on true. But in that note also, that there's a difference between facts and the truth. Because facts are facts. They're real. Yeah. Your side and what you're feeling is real. It's not fake. His side, what he feels, or their side, is also facts. Facts. They are factual. But the problem with facts is they change. You look at TV, what they used to say cures heartburn, they now have facts causes cancer. Those are facts. Facts. This medicine does cure heartburn. It prevents it. We later found out that the facts change and they also cause cancer. Those are still facts. But that truth, that truth is always, that truth is imminent. Thank you. It never goes away. It stays the same because the truth is God. Jesus said in, in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. God is truth, period, over and done with. And we know from numbers that he cannot lie because he's not man and he can't change his mind. Malachi 3, 6 says he is the God that changes not. Hebrews 13, 8 says Jesus Christ is his name yesterday, today, and forever. The truth never changes. So coming to the realization of that truth is the importance. And and if God is not the center, you're never going to get to the truth. And that truth may be that we both had facts that were valid against the other one, but we're willing to lay that down and move on and let God intervene and, and build on this relationship. Or this friendship is just toxic to the both of us. You are desperately seeking one direction. I'm desperately seeking another. And we do need to just agree to disagree and call it off. And that's okay. So yeah, I mean, spot on. But know those two differences. That there's too many times and too many arguments. It's about a right and a wrong. And they're not always a right and a wrong. Sometimes there's just facts and truth. I think that's a lot of times why you don't get the apology that you think you deserve. Oh, yeah. Because they don't think they're wrong. Right. I mean, I've been there. I didn't think I was wrong for anything. Right. And you're waiting on an apology for me? For Expecting what? one. You know? Um, so just know that. You're not going to get the apology that you think you deserve because they don't think you deserve one. Right. They don't think they owe you one. And that's... Once I learned that, it's been easier to lay that down. Same here. I mean, that's something we've built on for the last 20 years, you know, is, is growing in that and learning that and understanding that. And we're still working on that. And just continue to pray for those people. Um, I have a particular case that still bothers me to my core and I can't shake it. And God's been dealing with me on it. But that's been the thing is just pray for them. I don't know what they're going through. I don't speak to them anymore. I don't I don't deal with them anymore. Um, so I don't know what's going on with them. I hear things yeah. here and there, but I don't know. Um, that could be people stirring up strife, as always. And so it's just, just bring them to the feet of Jesus. That's all you can do when they come up on your mind or you start to get sad or just bring them to the feet of Jesus because... You don't know what's going on with them, but he does. And so maybe that's all they need is just some prayer. Um, maybe they're really going through some things. <clears throat> maybe you uncovered something that they truly cannot handle or don't know how to handle. Right. Um, and that's been beneficial in just trying to lay people down. Because when you've been friends with somebody <coughs> for a while, 
and it just kind of dissolves and nobody really got to say their piece. Nobody really got to tell their side, so to speak. It can drag you into this tunnel of darkness and, I mean, debilitation, honestly. Absolutely. And so, just learning that God was protecting you from something, maybe God was protecting them from something, whatever the case may be. Um, just, that's the biggest thing I can say is when they come up and when you're struggling with the memories or, you know, Satan's trying to drag that and flash it in your face, you know, just put your foot down and, and don't get sucked into that pit. Just bring them straight to the feet of Jesus because he can fix that. And, and he does. And mm -hmm. it's <clears throat> taken me a lot longer than I want to admit to really get to that point in that relationship. It's something you have to work on daily. Yeah. In, in all instances, it really is. Because I don't want anything bad to happen to anybody. I don't wish evil on anybody. Right. But I really don't want to pray for you. You know, I mean, let's just be real. I, I don't. I don't. I don't even want your name to come out of my mouth. And there's just some people that have been in our lives that that's how I feel. And right. It's been a struggle. And I'm like, okay, God, I don't know what's going on with them, but you do. And I lift them up to you right now. And it does work. It yeah. takes some time. Right. Maybe it's just me having to be obedient in some things. I think I have that's to a, learn the hard way. That's a lot of it. Obedience is a difficult, difficult oh, journey. Yeah. That was that was good. That was fun to get into and much needed. And, and we appreciate you guys again for an awesome year. We're looking forward to this year and all that it un, has to offer and, and can unfold for us. And, and we're excited. Um, got some material fixing to come out as soon as we can get everything finalized. Um, I'm going to tell you too, don't forget about our blogs that are on there. Um, they're on the website. Um, I'm going to get this wrong because it's, it's, it's a long one. Let me, uh, let me see if I can access it. I think I can and this thing still record. I, I hope so. Um, we'll see. I don't have much time left. Um. Uh-oh. Oh, no. I think I just cut <laughs> podcast completely off. That's what I think just happened. We'll link it on here. Um, we'll link it on our website. I mean, on our <laughs> social media. Uh, Did we just erase all of it? Yeah. I think I just accidentally awesome. erased the whole podcast. So, <laughs> yeah, it's not on here. So, isn't that great? Um... Yeah, I sure did. So anyway, um, being that's the case, I'll just go ahead and tell you, now that I've done the damage on this. <laughs> oh, I love the the mysteries of all of this. Uh, the website and our blogs and the podcast are on there. Is uh, It's actually, it is uh, quintministries.wix. S I T E dot com. That's what it's on. Uh, you can access our blogs and our uh, podcast. There's a button on there now for those. Uh, this one won't be on there, of course. But <laughs> unless we find it miraculously, I I don't know what happened. I was just trying to click over and <laughs> I just deleted it. But we're gonna get better. Praise God, we're gonna get better. Anyway. Um, we appreciate everything. We really do. And if you need anything, reach out to us uh, through our website. There's stuff you can reach us there. Uh, DM us through our social media outlets, uh, Instagram, Facebook. Thinking about some TikTok stuff. We're trying we to... have a site, but... With everything that's kind of going on, I'm trying to do some research and figure out if that's the right platform or not with everything that's been going on. So... Uh, Definitely got to do some more little short videos and stuff that we're going to start posting and, and stepping up the game a little bit. So I guess until next time, we appreciate it. We love you. And thanks for listening to Raw and Real with TJ and Jim. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.